what you're doing in the 20 second race rule. Say nothing, how about coming to the materials, KGN is then, yeah, that's fine. By the way, your keynote speaker in the afternoon. I'd like to thank my <coughs> friend uh, Robert Caution and uh, Tommy Seagull for the, for the invitation. <laughs> okay. Um, I stand before you as a, not as a technologist, um, but as someone with A levels in biology, chemistry, and as Colin said, um, chartered accountant. Um, let me just take you through what we're going to cover. Do a brief introduction in a minute of uh, the topic. Um, we'll look at high value markets, uh, characterize what, they, what they really look like, what they mean, how we might generate wealth from new technologies, some of the limitations and barriers to commercialization. I've got one or two comments about how we might take this forward and break down some of those barriers. Um, have a little session on investment and finance, and then we'll, we'll summarize. Um, Stevens Technology and Innovation as a consulting practice. We're associated members of the Institute of Mining Metals and Materials. And we specialise in emerging technologies, providing active management and where we can money. Um, I'm going to introduce a few of the projects um, that we're focused on currently, which I think are uh, right in this sort of high value market space. Uh, I'd also just like to acknowledge that in part of my preparation uh, for today, I have been dipping into uh, TSP material, um, but I don't apologise for that. I actually quite like it, and I think it's quite focused. I think it may just help provide some context for you know, the speakers that follow me and also for some of the uh, Q&A. I did like this quote, people don't buy technologies, uh, they buy what technologies do for them. I think it's quite uh, defining. <coughs> Let me just introduce you to one of our first projects, which we think is right in the high value market space. This is three dimensional architectural metal forming um, to automotive quality, precision and finish. Uh, bring together uh, design and manufacturing influence and it's very much focused at the top end of, uh, of architecture and construction for the iconic buildings that we're seeing going up around the world. So let's just look at some of the characteristics of, of high value markets. Um, for some, for some people might be surprised at this, I'm sure you're not, but so the UK is the sixth largest manufacturer, uh, representing a good proportion of GDP, um, exports and, and employees. And I think we know, you know what we have to do now as we um, find that barriers to trade are um, lowering, uh, transport costs are uh, lowering, communications is having an impact on how we do business. Um, so if we're going to remain competitive, uh, we, we have to change the way we, we work. And I think, I think again, it, it's, we're in competition with you know, these low cost manufacturing locations. So how do we differentiate ourselves in the UK and other high, high cost economies? So it is very much moving from these traditional sectors of manufacturing <coughs> high, value, high value knowledge intensive goods and services. Um, we, you know, we're not just producing a product, but now we're looking at how we um, produce and service that product over, over its lifetime. Um, the business model is changing uh, very much towards the specialization and the outsourcing model. If we don't need to own the process internally, we outsource it, we move it on. What we're also seeing is in the bigger picture that I think ownership structures are, are developing we're getting much bigger players in the, in the market out there. Um, and of course, to remain competitive, we know we have to innovate. I think one other comment I'd just like to make is it's not only manufacturing that is high value, there's also the service sector. Um, and that shouldn't be forgotten. And there is actually you know, a large innovation agenda around that. Um, 
if I just take sort of professional services and specialist consultancy, I take it back to the um, 3D architecture. So one of the cons specialist consultancies we're working with there uh, is an Austrian company that specialises in um, panelisation. This is, this is so high level um, mathematical analysis of uh, uh, surface areas of, of uh, three dimensional building envelopes. And it, it, it is very much focused on that sort of high value added, added space. So I think services and manufacturing can sit together in, in this sort of high value space quite easily. Let me introduce you to another one of our projects. This is in the space of powder metallurgy, net shape and net shape manufacturing. <coughs> so where we're <coughs> manufacturing extruder wear parts um, for the food polymer uh, pharma applications, we're taking some of the technology um, and material science into aerospace, oil and gas services, uh, automotive um, components, etc. What we're doing here is we've got some unique and novel alloys um, being developed, uh, metallic and composite structures. Uh, we have functional structuring of these materials into the, the net and near shape um, components, optimizing some material usage. So there is a touch of sort of sustainability and environmental issue there. But again, it's, it's very much in this sort of high value manufacturing space. <coughs> so in terms of generating wealth uh, from these new technologies, um, what's it all about? How, how do we do it? It is difficult, it is risky. Um, and in the space that I'm, I'm in, um, there's very much emerging technology. So that's early stage, um, pre-commercialization, a lot of ambition, enthusiasm, um, and you know we, we this, we're seeing opportunities to be disrupted um, in, in certain aspects of it. Um, so what are these these technologies actually offering? Um, I think sometimes it's solutions that aren't available. So three-dimensional forming of, um, of uh, facades for buildings is something that is probably not available at the moment, or if it is, it's, it's using very, very different techniques. Um, emerging technologies also lead to new products and services. Um, <coughs> we can also adapt, uh, I think, sort of technologies, processes, through the use of these emerging technologies. I think, um, you know, again, there'll, there'll probably be some examples I show you that that, that sort of fits into. Um, these technologies are rising obviously from sort of scientific breakthrough. Um, they, and it's also from the integration and combination of technologies. So we might find that uh, we, we have, um, they might call it, uh, so one, or two, one or two different technologies. Sorry, I'm going to, let me move on. I've got the tongue tied on that one. Um, Again, some of the answers I'm working with my clients, I have to sort of look at, I'm looking at some of these characteristics and the, the, that they portray. And I think it's very true that the, these entrepreneurs, if you like, have a lot of energy. Um, they should have flexibility, some do, some don't. They're very focused on this particular path that they're following. Um, but we have to sometimes sort of take them off to one side and move them down another, another channel. We certainly require tenacity. This is a long-term program, taking ideas through into the high-value market space. We certainly need, or they certainly need, you if you're the entrepreneur, clarity of understanding of your product, the process of invention. You have to articulate that, demonstrate how it does fit into that market space, 